investment banker, consumer advocate, analyst, and trader. Chris Markowski is the watchdog of Wall Street. Joining us, our experts, radio talk show host, Chris Markowski, the name of the show, Watchdog on Wall Street. You get more info from Chris at watchdogonwallstreet.com, also a financial planner, former investment banker. He's ready to go. The reality is the biggest market out there is the debt market. And when mm. nobody is lending and nobody's doing business with one another, and a great company like Caterpillar has got to pay an additional $15 million because they can't get access to capital, we're going to see layoffs. We're going to see major problems on Main Street. We could see unemployment go upwards of 10% in a blink of an eye unless these credit markets markets open up and that's what this bailout attempts to do. I don't think that Barack Obama needs to say I'm gonna you know lift the whole thing up myself. I think he needs to place this back on small businesses, corporate America to lift this out of it. I think one of the problems we're seeing and one of the reasons why the markets are going down is that everyone's looking to Washington DC to solve the problems. They're not able to do it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it here all across America and get Americans back excited about this country investing and doing the things and taking risk which they've been avoiding. As a financial planner it's almost like a doctor-patient type of relationship. I need to know how many kids you have. I need to know how much money you're making. I need to all know all these various different things before I'm going to tell you what to do with your money. And anybody, you know, so, 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 one of the problems out there, a lot of investors, is they listen to these yahoos on the radio and on television telling you buy this, sell this, when they don't know you. Would you listen to a brain surgeon holding a television show saying, I got a headache, doc, what should I do? Well, you should start cutting here. No, <laughs> you don't do that. You need to get your plan done. Yeah, it's got to make you feel all warm and fuzzy inside that, you know, we the taxpayers, and this huge bailout, buyout, whatever you want to call it, are going to be going to executives. What Wall Street's trying to tell us right now is this, if we don't have this money to give, we're not going to be able to retain the best and the brightest. Well, if you had the best and the brightest, how come everything tanked? We need to get off the hamster wheel. We need to break up these big banks. We need to get rid of this too big to fail nonsense by not making these banks so big. So when they do fail, it brings everything down with us. First and foremost, there's this weird reality out here that homes are this wonderful investment. They're not. If you take your home as a bill, like you pay the electric bill every single month and buy something that you can afford, you'd be fine. You're going to enjoy your life to a much greater degree. This is America. You have the right to your dreams. But you know what? You should have to pay for them, too. And one of the things I try to tell people every single week on my radio show, that everything in life that has meaning, value, and worth takes work, time, and effort. And if something is missing in one of those variables, something is wrong. Mm -hmm. And the idea that you can go out and get a home and you should get all this stuff and I'm going to take money out of my house to go on vacation in Orlando, that's nuts. That's insane. Yeah. White collar crime does pay here in this country, especially if you have a good lawyer, you can get away with it. I mean, I'm in ground zero, you know, southwest Florida. We've known that there's been a problem with the real estate market going back to 2005. If maybe instead of doing this and said, hey, listen, anybody who picks up this bad paper is going to get a capital gains holiday. You're not going to have to pay any taxes on this. You're going to get a 15% bonus mm. marked into that. We wouldn't even need this type of a deal. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the markets, the credit markets, our entire economy. A lot of that has to do in regards to what the tax policies are going to be. If there was some clarity, it might free up the credit markets as well. We might not have had to go on this route. The reality is, is this is an insurance company that writes insurance contracts. I have my life insurance with AIG. How much of those insurance contracts can be worth once people get wind that they're breaking contracts? with their employees that were written before this whole thing happened. This whole thing stinks to high heaven, but we are already on the hook for, what, $160 billion to AIG? Talk about a company going under fast. You can see boo once they start breaking contracts. What we need to do is we need to focus on solutions right now. And the only way we're going to get that $170 billion Forget about that 160 million. That'll yeah. come back with it too. Got is it. we need to sell off AIG. We got to break it into little pieces. Okay. It's got very profitable units and get that money back. All right. Conventional wisdom says when you're young, you're in your 20s, uh, especially in 401ks. Uh, invest really, really aggressive. Get into the most aggressive funds. Right. Be in all the aggressive stuff out there. I think that's the wrong idea. I'm a big believer in compounding. Albert Einstein, compounding, the royal road to riches, eighth wonder of the world. If you start when you're 20 years old and you're just seeing a six, seven, eight percent return, by the time you have to take that money out, you know what? You're a multi-millionaire. Not just a millionaire, a multi-millionaire. I suggest investing in bulldozers and, and wrecking balls to help the housing market and knocking some of these things down. The reason why that you're not seeing them come down hard on the CEOs down in, in downtown New York on Wall Street is because they're buddies. They went to the same schools together. They golf together. They travel on each other's planes and they get most of their political contributions from Wall Street. So that's why we never see that cleaned up. I don't know if he knows where Jimmy Hoffa is or maybe he's got the address for Osama Bin Laden's cave. I don't know what type of information he, this guy has or he's giving up. 
But I, I, I can't fathom this guy being out. I, I, it seems to me this is the definition of flight risk. I mean, this guy is facing, because of his age, the rest of his life in jail. I, I, I mean, he could go anywhere. He's got the wherewithal. He's got the money. He could buy a passport. He could do all sorts of things.